Let's share some stuff. Let's share. Are we rolling? We're good. Ready? Okay. All right. So I'm Dr. Jesse Hawkins. I'm the a clinical researcher and the director of the Franklin School of Integrative Health Sciences, where we conduct our research, primarily uh, integrative health research. Yeah, I'm Christy Hires. I am the aromatherapy department chair here at the school and I love being a part of the research team. Yeah, so we are going to have a conversation about clinical research. Um, we're going to walk you through the entire research process, kind of a an informal behind the scenes yeah. look at what we do. What, what does this look like? How do we measure things? Mm -hmm. How do we know what to research? The whole nine. Yeah. All Let's the way just through. have a conversation about it. Yeah. So I think we have to start with um, what we do before we conduct a clinical trial. Um, yeah. At I think the very beginning. At the very beginning before the work gets exciting. Right. Yeah. You got to define things. We have to be all on the same page. Right. And this is where I think the scientific method we learned in grade school gets is, us a little in trouble. It does. It's not doing us any favors. That's true. Yeah. Where it's just, you have curiosity and you follow it and you explore it and then you found a new truth that's applicable to everyone. Except Ooh. not really. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Right. Yeah. So then I think for the first video, what is yeah. research? I think that's a great start. What do we mean? Because people say, you know, do your research. Right. Everyone needs to do their research. And then we also confuse like a, a research paper right. with the research process and research sure. methods. What do we mean when we say we conduct clinical research? Yeah. So we are boiling it down. We are questioning and we are testing the observations that we have in our known world. Yeah. What is perspective? What, what is how I experience something to be? And what is really the case? Right. Is what I'm visually seeing, is what I'm tangibly experiencing, is that going to hold through other people's experiences? Exactly. And we're essentially big toddlers. Always. In that point. <laughs> Why? Why? Why does this do? And that constant um, critically addressing yeah. information, not being critical of information, but critically addressing information and and really being comfortable with with ignorance. That's a huge part of it is being able to say, I thought I knew a thing and now I don't. Or do I now know right. something just a little bit in a little bit different of a perspective? And so right. I think that's where we can then start talking about our intuition. Yes. And some of the things that we absolutely knew when we were toddlers that we've carried, carried into our adult toddlerness. <laughs> we know that a stove is hot because of right. an experience. Because of personal experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So all the things we know. Why do cars go fast? Is a stove hot? Is the earth round? Is right. an authority told us it was? Or we learned through personal experience, or we learned through our intuition, or we learned through deduction. And this is a completely different way of learning. We're learning through observation. Right. And then through that observation, asking questions. If mm -hmm. this is true, then what else could possibly be true after that? Right. And that's what sets this field apart from practicing law, from studying history, from anything else. With, if you're practicing law, you don't ask questions if you don't already know the answer to them. I mean, that's kind of the, the yeah. golden rule, a, right? Yeah, you're in a courtroom and you're as a don't lawyer. Don't surprises. <laughs> right. Yes. You, you take practice time to make sure that you're um, getting the answers that you're expecting. Right. And right. science does not work that way. No. Or a historian even. You read the original records, but you have to use your intuition and your deduction to make sense of all of that and obtain information. Whereas this is almost a more almost primitive sure. way of, I mean, we, we don't accept intuition. We don't accept deduction. We want evidence. Mm -hmm. and, and we're digging and saying, you know, Everything is going to be questioned until we have sufficient evidence 
to demonstrate something. We're not using those other ways of knowing. Right. So we're not trying to prove something that we already know? Right. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> We're, we're being facetious, of course, that right. uh, we do, but we see it a lot. Uh, we want yes. to have an experiment that we absolutely know is successful. We don't want sometimes to fail. And so yes. we try to set up things and we meaning human beings, right. try to set up an experience so that we can have success. Yeah. And science is a lot of falling down on our face. It is a lot. It is, if you are participating in this because you're getting into scientific research, you want to conduct research or you want to participate in research in some way, you've got to get used to being wrong. <laughs> right? Absolutely. I mean, you're, the first thing that's going to happen is your ego is going to take a nosedive. This, this is not a field for patting yourself on the back and having all the answers, it's actually a field for recognizing how many answers we don't have. And I think one of the most frustrating parts about that is when you get to the end of a project, you may have more questions than you have answers. Yes. And it, resonating right. or leaving that in out there is really tough sometimes because we might have our biggest critics might say, well, yeah, you answered one question, but what about these right. other five about questions? These other, yes, but that wasn't the point of the study. Yeah. I So with research, there's different kinds of research. There's basic research where we're trying to just understand the world around us. Why does the apple fall from the tree? And then there's applied research where we're trying to solve problems. Okay. And I always like to look at it as, so there's a lot of caves around here. We're based in Nashville. And we took our family once to a big cave system. And they explained how there were so many miles of caves that had not yet been explored. Because when sure. they're going through a cave, a new system, they will take it all the way to the end. And then they make notes of the new tunnels that they discovered. And then when they get to the end of it, then they can start down one of those tunnels. Yeah, absolutely. And then they notice new ones they need to discover and so on. And it's a lot like that. You know, we're, we're answering a question. We're taking it to discover what's there. But ideally, then we come back and say, we found five new lines of inquiry we didn't even know existed yeah. as a result of this exploration. And so then there's... The, that's why the field continues on forever. We, sure. we don't have to artificially create new questions. As we do our job, we find, so that worked, why? Will it work over here? Will it work in that population? Right. Or this didn't work at that dose. Why did it not work at that dose? Will it work at this other dose? Is, you know, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? And so, again, that, that getting comfortable with being wrong because it's good information. Yeah. You know, I, conducting a clinical trial and finding that something doesn't work in this population at this dose is just as exciting as finding that it does. Yeah, and staying on track. The other part of that is what you, what I was picturing is how fun would it be to say, oh, I'm not gonna go to the end, I'm gonna go off. And, and we have to, as science yes. researchers, we have to stay the course. You have to get to the end, even if you feel as though you're going to get a negative results and that yes. won't be as popular of an opinion. We have to stay the course to answer that question. Right to then be able to come back, so basic. Right, so yeah, following that formal path. And, and the field of science is really just getting better at asking questions, mm -hmm. getting better at collecting evidence, and getting better at interpreting evidence. So it's not necessarily teaching anyone what to think, uh, and that's why you know the principles that we talk about are applicable, whether you're studying drugs, psychology, integrative health, health behaviors, the process is the same. The type of evidence you're gonna gather is gonna be different. Right. The way you interpret it is going to be based upon the other knowledge that you have. But the underlying process of conducting research on humans is pretty consistent across the board. How we know we got good evidence, how we analyze data, very basic framework. Absolutely. All across the board. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're joining us for this series, you're in for a doozy. Um, <laughs> the takeaway I think from this one is get comfortable with sitting in ignorance. Right. Learn to value 
reaching a point where you don't know because the the point where you don't know it is exactly what's required to actually discover something you, you have to recognize what you don't know in order to get to what you do know and if we are never willing to be wrong if we're never willing to make a mistake we're never going to learn anything new so rule number one yeah of the scientific process we need to learn how to value our ignorance value a failed experiment, a, yep. allow... A failed experiment. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, be, you're going to take on critics if you're going to be oh, a part of yes, this research yes. Get ready process. For a lot of that. And yeah. somebody will come along and say, you five years ago said this, and now you're saying this, so everything you say, I can't believe. <laughs> and that's a tough one because tough one. we are trying to teach you to be okay with... Right. Uh, down the road to be able to say what I knew then I don't continue to believe right because well, now there's new more. evidence mm -hmm. and, and it's built upon that and it's provided clarity and context and we realize that was interpreted wrong yeah which is why our field has to grow it has to yeah Using and that's why this process is so important yeah absolutely yeah using the tools that we have in order to continue to move forward in our information is only going to make um, every part of our existence richer and right. yeah. smarter. So that's what research is. That's why you should engage in it or hire us to engage in that's it. That's right. We do that too. Um, and you should also stick around because in the next one we are going to talk about how we know things. So we talked about Science is a process of knowing things. Right. What what does that mean? That right? And so I'm excited about being able to move forward and Yeah. And we'll cover words like epistemology and <laughs> other fun things that, you know, you can kinda of rattle off and they make you sound really smart. So stick around so you'll learn those terms too. Okay.